It is Tuesday going on Wednesday, and uh, we're here doing uh, a live Rise and Shine from the office of Pastor Ken. Let's go right into the Word of God, the book of Psalms, chapter 119. Picking right up where I left off yesterday, I'm going to go to verse 38, where it says, Reassure me that your promises are for me, for I trust and revere you. I can't tell you how many promises there are in the Word of God. I've read statements, but it seems like you can't even turn the page in the Bible without coming across a promise of God's provision, His care, His love, His leading, His guiding, His direction, His desire to get you to heaven. His promises never fail. People may fail you. Circumstances may disappoint you. But I promise you that the promises of God are true. They really are true. Now, I have noticed in my lifetime that the promises always seem to have a condition attached to them. Like God is promising you something, but he's expecting you to do something. For instance, faithfulness and submitting to the Lord and obeying the Lord and following the leading of the Holy Spirit, staying in the Word of God, and praying, and when he lays something on your heart that he's not pleased with, and you know that he's speaking to you, and you ignore that, that's what I'm talking about. You know, there's some iffy situations when it comes to the promises. The promises are there, and they're absolutely true. The conditions of the promise are up to me and you, you and I. Will I fulfill my part? I'm not really trying to promote. I'm not trying to promote working your way to heaven at all. I'm not. I I just uh, believe that salvation is a free gift of God. Um, if we're up to works, we'd be boasting about it. That's what the scripture says, and that's not the way it should be. But there's a real vast difference between just praying the sinner's prayer and really getting dedicated, you know, to following the Lord. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've discovered that difference or not, but when the Bible says, take up your cross and follow the Lord, um, sometimes there's some sacrifice and some laying off of sin and wickedness and ungodliness, and, and uh, that may seem so hard for you but ask the Lord, ask the Lord to make you willing to do all that. And he will, he will, and he'll help you with it. I promise you. And I say, Lord, your promises are right there in your word, but I need some reassurance. Now, I it says that right in verse 38, I need some reassurance. Reassure me that the promises are for me. I, I know they were for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I, I know they're for the, where they were for the Apostle Paul. I know they were for the disciples. But reassure me that the promises are for me. That's what the psalmist is really saying. He says, because I trust you. I revere you. I respect you. You'd be surprised how many of the promises of God have come true in your life if you would have kept a running journal. I can tell you for a fact that God has taken care of Charlotte and I all the way through our ministry. Even when I didn't deserve it, he has been there to take care of us. I can think of 101 ways he's taken care of us. His promises are true. I can tell you of healings in our lives. 
his promises are true. I can tell you of miracles in our lives. We weren't supposed to have any children, according to the doctor, but Dr. Jesus had other plans. His promises of healing were true. When he called us here to Mountaintop Ministries, we didn't have literally a nickel to rub one against another. We begin, begin to pray about that and talk to uh, talk to some godly people who shared the vision and dream of uh, an evangelistic work here in Buvec Canyon Valley. The truth is, as I look back, I see nothing but the promises of God coming true. We've got a beautiful facility. We did not go to the bank one time. You see, the Bible says God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I'm not saying if you have a debt or a mortgage or there's something wrong and you're not getting answers to prayer. I'm not even suggesting that. I'm just saying in our situation, God wanted a ministry here in Buchanan Valley. He wanted an evangelical witness that preached the born-again experience, gave honor and glory and praise to him in every service, preached the true word of God, gave altar calls for people to get saved, believed in the supernatural healing power of God, and God undertook, and we would build until we would run out of money, and I'd say, let's stop and pray, and we would pray and more money would come in, Having gone through eight different building experiences now, I'm uh, just just finishing one the other day. Uh, Pastor Ron gave leadership to it, but I can honestly and truthfully say, haven't been to the bank one time. Haven't God has honored His promises? Okay. He said, "Given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over." And, you know, we've tried to encourage the people, you can't outgive God. You give to God, and God will give back to you. And it works. It works. So here in this verse, verse 8, 38, the psalmist is saying, <laughs> I need some reassurances. Well, I need, I need to ask you here and encourage you here, you know, come out of your box a little bit. And plant some seeds, plant some seeds, and trust God, find the promise in the Word of God, and trust God, surround yourself with a group of people who will help believe in your miracle, and trust God, and, and, and say, Lord, I don't quite have the faith, but I want to. Can you reassure me? God's up for that. I don't hear many messages on this because, you know, I hear lots of messages on you got to have faith and, you know, if you don't have it, you, then you're falling short. But here the psalmist is asking for some reassurance and some help with his faith before he ever gets it into action. And God's up for that. He really is. He sees your heart. So even before you get the faith that can move the mountain, say, I need some reassurances that these promises are for me. He's up for that. That's what the promise, the, 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 the psalmist, that's what he was talking about. And that's my goal today, to encourage you, uh, you know, with that. When you have doubt and you're not sure, you can ask him, look, I'm not, I'm not quite there. I, I just, I'm not sure. I don't have enough faith. I need to know these promises work for me, not just them church people. <laughs> That's what this verse is about. He's saying, reassure me that your promises, he said, I need to see that they'll work for me. Now I'm going to pray for you. Father, I take off my hat and respect to you, Father. I love you. There's people who need miracles in their life, and they don't have the faith and they have a lot of doubt. They are trembling. They are hurting. 
and they would like to really believe that the Word of God could work for them. It's a preliminary step to faith and trust. But they're being honest and they're asking you, please, God, reassure me that this works. And I know, God, you're up for that. Bring that reassurance to that struggling person, that hurting person, that fearful, doubting person. Bring reassurance to them and help, help them to be brought up to where they should be in their faith walk where they can really begin to receive from you. But you're up for this first prayer for them, that their faith and their belief and their reassurance could be dealt with.